Santa Monica, California seems to be America's stereotypical beach town, but beneath the touristy surface of the pier and Third Street Promenade is a west side community filled of fun and amazing food. Welcome to Traveling Tips. My name is Michael, and each week I take you along my journey to find great experiences and food. This week, I'm gonna show you around and give you some tips for having a great day in Santa Monica. From the beach and the pier to the downtown dining scene, these are just some of the ways to experience this city by the sea. At the western end of Santa Monica Boulevard is, well, Santa Monica. The city is home to more than 90,000 people crammed into just eight square miles of land. We'll start the day with coffee and breakfast from Tartine Santa Monica. This is a local chain, but I wanted to bring you here to this location since it's in an old church on a lovely, quiet street. They're known for their breads, and I'm in love. I'm having a towering breakfast sandwich with bacon and egg on toast with a side of lemon poppy seed bread and Tartine's famous bread with butter. I'll link the menu down in the description. Be prepared to wait on weekends as this spot is very popular. You can also check out Breakfast by Salt's Cure or Primo Paso Coffee for great morning spots that are closer to the ocean. With the sun high in the sky, we'll head to the beach. Santa Monica has three miles of wide ocean front flanking the north and south sides of the pier. There are large parking lots near the sand for easy access. The beach stays clean with the help of volunteers supporting the Heal the Bay Foundation, which hosts regular beach cleanups. Heal the Bay also has a small aquarium near the entrance to the pier, serving as an education center for the Santa Monica Bay. The Santa Monica bike path runs along the beach and connects to the oceanfront path in Venice Beach. It's great for walking, jogging, or riding a bike. On the beach just south of the pier is the original Muscle Beach. You can regularly find locals swinging from the rings with ease. And you can even give it a go yourself. If you're spending your day on the beach, lunch can be a little tricky. Food on the pier is quite pricey and requires fighting crowds and long wait times. Food stands like this one are dotted along the bike path serving typical American fare. If you're heading off the beach for lunch, I'd recommend heading up Montana Avenue or into downtown Santa Monica to Stout Burgers, King and Queen Cantina, Nick the Greek, or the Independence. Santa Monica can be a bit of a pain to get around. The city allows scooter services to get around the downtown area. By the beach, bicycle rentals are popular for exploring the miles of beachfront on the boardwalk bike path. Parking is convenient and inexpensive in many of the downtown garages, while the oceanfront lots are a bit of an expensive headache. The LA Metro Expo Line train terminates here, connecting Santa Monica to downtown Los Angeles. Of course, you can always get around on foot. If you're visiting from out of town, you'll most likely want to book one of the hotels closest to the ocean. Here on Ocean Boulevard are where many of the mega hotels are located, like Shutters on the Beach and the Lowe's Hotel. As the sun begins to dip in the sky, we'll head to the ocean and the world-famous Santa Monica Pier. Built in 1909, this pier has entertained Angelinos and visitors alike with its carnival atmosphere and ocean views. 
You've probably seen this peer in video games or on the screensaver for your Apple TV. In real life, this peer attracts locals and visitors alike. The Ferris wheel and roller coaster at the Pacific Park Amusement Park are fun seaside attractions. The tip of the pier is a great spot to catch a fish or catch a sunset. To cap off your night, head into downtown Santa Monica for dinner and nightlife. There's no shortage of great dinner spots in Santa Monica. I'd recommend making reservations for Elefante, Blue Plate Taco, Ye Old King's Head, or Birdie G's in the downtown. After dinner, head out for a drink and dancing. Bars like The Bungalow and 1212 are some of the most popular nightlife in town. I also like Bodega Wine Bar and Esther's Wine Bar for casual drinks. Quick history lesson. This area was initially inhabited by the Tongva people and saw a great development boom in the mid 20th century. At one time, these waters were destined to be the port of Los Angeles before the port of San Pedro and Long Beach were picked to be the primary ports instead. Today, this seaside city attracts visitors from all over the world to the famous pier and beach and is the gateway to the most scenic portion of the Pacific Coast Highway in LA County. The temperature is generally cooler than it is just a few miles to the east because of its proximity to the Pacific Ocean. Many mornings throughout the year start cold and foggy closer to the water, but clear up and warm up by lunchtime. For that reason, out-of-town visitors are often surprised when they show up to the beach early expecting a full day of warm and sunny weather. I personally think that the best beach weather of the year in Santa Monica is late July through beginning of October. Make sure to dress warmly. As soon as the sun sets, temperatures drop, even in the summer. A light jacket or sweatshirt will do the trick. Thanks for joining me. Make sure to leave a like and a comment. For more weekly videos, make sure to subscribe so you don't miss them and make sure to check out the suggested videos popping up next. Thanks for coming with me to Santa Monica. See you in the next one.